So, you are just starting out as a freelance designer and you're wondering if Upwork is still worth your time and effort in 2023. Well, the short answer to your question is a resounding yes. But how do you get started? Don't worry, I've got you covered. Here are seven tips that can take you from zero to hero in less than a year. And I'm sure this works because this ultimate strategy helped me maintain a five-star account that made me over 100k in just under a year. So stick around and by the end of this video, you'll be ready to conquer Upwork like a pro, just like I did. The first tip that I can give you is you do not have to beat the lowest rate to win projects. One of the biggest misconceptions in freelancing is that the freelancer with the lowest rates always gets the job. While this is true for some jobs, this never works for jobs that are actually worth the time and effort. Clients who go for the freelancers with the lowest rates are usually not the best to work with anyway. They may create a toxic working environment for you and even demand more work than they're paying you for. Trust me, any job where the client states that they're going for the freelancer with the lowest rate, it's a huge red flag and is definitely not worth your time. In fact, I found out that when I raised my rates, I started getting even more jobs. And this is because most clients are looking for high quality work and they would not mind paying a higher rate for someone that has more skills. But that of course doesn't mean you should charge unreasonable prices for your services. Make sure you have an adequate skill and experience for what you are charging. Know your worth and charge according. It also helps to have a fixed rate for clients who have no clear idea of what their project is worth, which is your job to help them determine. In a nutshell, don't undercharge and definitely don't overcharge. But still, go for a higher rate with no worries. Sometimes to earn more, all it takes is to just ask for more. The second tip I can give you is don't compare yourself to others. Because comparison is the thief of joy in all things, including freelance. As a freelancer that is just starting out, the last thing you want to do is compare yourself to other more experienced freelancers on the platform that have many reviews and better profiles. Don't compare your level 1 to someone's level 20. Don't do it. Just don't. Everyone has their days of humble beginnings. I did too. I remember starting with zero projects and zero reviews and sometimes I'd go check out top freelancers with awesome profiles and hundreds of thousands of dollars in earnings and I'd just think to myself, nah, this can't be me. I can never get to this level. And of course, it made me lose hope. I was so stuck in becoming like them that I forgot to grow and that affected me severely. The moment I realized I needed to focus on myself and not on them, I started growing. And here I am today, at the same level I thought I was never going to get. The reality is that you will not even compete for the same clients, so why bother thinking about them? Usually, more experienced freelancers have higher rates and collaborate on long-term projects without taking new ones, so you will get enough chances to find great projects. In my case, for example, once I got to the higher level of freelancing, I rarely applied to jobs because I had more work than I could do anyway. And believe me, that is the case with many experienced freelancers. So don't sweat it, just do you, focus on your career and go with it. Don't try to be someone else. The third tip is don't join before having a strong portfolio. I can't emphasize this enough. Get your portfolio in shape before you get started on Upwork. Potential clients want to see what you can do by looking at what you have done in the past. And of course, your portfolio is supposed to speak for you here. How do you convince a client that you can design an entire website for them when you have no proof of your skills as a web designer? The problem is that if you join without a strong portfolio, you will have less chances to take projects, you will waste your connects and you will get frustrated thinking either the platform is no good or you just cannot make it. Now I know you're thinking, but I don't have any clients. How do I build a portfolio? And that's where concept projects come in. There are tons of concept project ideas that you can work on from scratch to showcase skills. Pick up the project that excites you the most, something you can have fun doing and give it your best shot. You'll be shocked at the magic you can create when you put your mind to it. Trust me, these initial projects will be enough to show your worth to potential clients. I have done this before and it worked wonders. I never had to buy extra connects since I joined Upwork. This whole idea is more about dressing for the life you want. So start working on your portfolio now. The fourth tip is Upwork profile alone is not enough. You need another way of getting leads and the best way is having a personal website where you can showcase more information about you and highlight your skills. A great one-two-page website that you designed yourself 
can be very easy to do and it can provide a lot of value as clients will get a sense of trust because they will get to know you better. Another benefit you have with the website is that you have full control on what you show there and how you do it, which can create a much more professional impression. Of course, you can also use other platforms like LinkedIn to help you highlight your knowledge and get ahead of your competition, but I would highly recommend you having a website first. The fifth step is communication is key. One mistake new freelancers make is that they rush to accept jobs without fully understanding what the project is all about. I know it's the excitement of finally landing a job, but make sure you don't make this mistake. It is crucial that you understand right from the start what the client requirements are, otherwise you may get the job and find out you do not have the right skill. And then you will waste your time and the client's time and you will get a bad review that will negatively impact your pro. Carefully read the job description, spend some time to do client research and the most important thing is to schedule an initial call with the client to ask some questions to determine if you are a good fit for the project. This has helped me a lot in keeping my profile only with 5 star reviews and if the client doesn't want to have a call then this may be a red flag. Although this may not always be the case as I have worked on great projects with clients I never saw from start to finish. But as a beginner, I would stay away from those until you have enough experience to read people and see if they are okay or not. And as an extra benefit, this initial call can help you show value to your prospect, which can lead to much higher earnings. The sixth tip is stay away from bad clients. Of course, bad clients exist. You can't always escape it, but you can avoid getting entangled with them by always reading the client reviews before applying to jobs. Now I know this is a no brainer, but you'll be surprised how many beginners still make this mistake. If the client has only one bad review, then that may be an isolated case due to a specific situation, but if many other freelancers had problems with that specific client in the past, chances are you will have the same problems too because it's obvious they are not willing to change and it's not worth the risk for your profile. Especially in the beginning, when you are just starting out, a bad review can cause a lot of problems in the long run. The seventh tip is to always request reviews. At the end of the jobs, politely ask happy clients to leave an honest review of your work and experience. That way you know what to improve on and how to make your work better. Plus, a good review looks incredibly good on your account and will help you get many new projects. One extra tip I can give you here is always mention to the client that it helps you a lot to also write a few words and not only give you 5 stars because that is an even stronger proof of your good work for future clients that will see your profile. Now this doesn't always work and I'm not sure why some clients are so lazy after you do a great job for them but we have to live with that. At least you do everything you can to make that perfect review happen. And a little hack here that you can do once you know or feel that the project is going to be finished is to take the pulse of the client and ask them if they are happy about the collaboration. It is really, really important because if they have something they didn't like, then you can maybe make up for those things before ending the contract and offer something extra to make sure you leave a nice impression and assure you turn a 4 star into a 5 star review. Now, of course, you shouldn't let the client take advantage of this, but I found out to be a nice win-win situation that can prove extremely useful for your profile. And another way of making sure you get good reviews is of course remember to continuously improve your skills by taking courses and working on personal projects. That way you can stay up to date with the latest design tools and trends. So, there you have it. If I had known these tips before starting my upward journey, I would have made more than 100k in one year. So guys, make sure this doesn't pass you by. Make these tips a constant reminder and they'll help you stand out from the crowd. Remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and got any value out of it and subscribe to the channel if you want to follow a web design career and are interested in knowing much more insights about projects, clients and of course how to increase your revenue. See you in the next video. Bye.